All right, POA, let's take a look at this homework. Um, so we kind of assigned a weird assignment today. It's kind of finishing up what we didn't, what we weren't able to do in class yesterday. So we're taking this idea of the distributive property, and now we're applying it um, into what we call, call a visual model or an area model. So when you're looking at these problems, what you really want to do is think about decomposing this number. Like multiplying 3 by 13 can be accomplished much easier if we take this 13 and think about like a number in two parts. Um, so if you take, think about 13 and think of it really as the same thing as say like 10 plus 3, you might gain a little more traction. So um, when we're setting up this area model, area of course of rectangle being web, length times width, we can take this area of th or a side of 3 and make it the entire side of this rectangle. Um, now on the, on the other side of things, if we take 13 instead of making it the entire length, but instead break it up into two parts. Um, so we'll say like the 10 part covers about this much. And then the, the three part covers about this much. Uh, we can then instead of trying to take this as one big multiplication problem, we can break it up into two smaller parts. Now that might seem like a overly complicated way to accomplish this multiplication, um, but I, I can assure you there is a reason for this that we're having you practice. So, um, since we're looking at these areas in two smaller parts, we can actually multiply in two smaller parts. We have 10 times 3, that makes 30. 3 times 3 makes 9. Um, so that gives us a total area of 39. Now you can double check it. If you want to grab a calculator so we multiply out 13 times 3, you'll find the area is indeed, or I'm sorry, the product is indeed 39. So here's a direct application of what we just did. Um, instead of giving us a number to break apart to decompose, they're actually giving us a number in decomposed form because one part of it's a variable, one part of it's unknown. Um, so again, we're going to start kind of in a similar way. 3 will cover this side of the rectangle. And now this number is already conveniently broken up into two parts. Let's make this part say the x. And then we can make this part right here a value of 2. Now, I'm not really concerned with the size of the rectangles, I just, especially since I know that one of them is x, and I don't really know how big x is. I'm just kind of arbitrarily choosing a size. Um, so when you do this multiplication in parts, we, now we do have 3 times x, that'll give us a 3x. And now, then we'll have again 3 times 2, that'll give us a 6. Now, just like before, we took those two pieces and added them together to get a total area. We're going to do the same thing here, but keep in mind these aren't like terms. One has an x, one doesn't. So we're looking at a 3x plus 6. Um, so in the end, if I can clean this up, 3x plus, 3 times the quantity x plus 2 is actually the same as a total area, 3x plus 6. Which if you can kind of think about all the work we've done with the distributive property the last couple days, all I really did is distribute. Uh, so now let's do some review, some staying sharp, complete the square box problem. All right, so remember, the thing to keep in mind here is that if I take these two side numbers and interact them to the top, that's a multiplication problem. And if I interact them to the bottom, that's an addition problem, combination. So um, just like all these problems, it really stands to reason, or the question to ask myself is, where do I start? And I need to start with the multiplication. And here's the reason why. I already have a number 2. And I know my target is 10. I think there's a few numbers I can think of where I take 2 times a number and equal 10. Um, in fact, the only number I can think of that fits that bill is a 5 that makes that number 5. And since I figure that out through the addition, I'm sorry, through the multiplication, the addition becomes much easier. If 2 times 5 is 10, 2 plus 5 is 7, those are your two answers. All right, let's look at number 2. Um, magic number puzzle. Um, so I get to choose, I can do this three times. One number is my choice, one number has to be negative. And the third, they want me to use the number n. Okay, so, um, I don't know, let's make it 2. Add, add 10 to that. I get 12. Multiply 2 to that, I get 24. Subtract 2 from that, I get 22. Divide by 2, I get 11. So start with 2, and with 11. Now let's do the same thing, but deal with a negative. Um, so, I don't know, let's just do a negative 2. Uh, so negative 2 plus 10 would be a positive 8, times 2 would be a 16, subtract 2 would be a 14, divide by 2 would be a 7. Interesting, I started with a positive and a negative, both ended up with positive numbers. I wonder if that's a pattern. Um, here let's choose n, because they're asking us to. Add 10 to n, we've got n plus 10, again they're not like terms, so I can't combine them. 
multiply by 2 here, so we've got to be careful. We've got to use uh, parentheses to indicate that n plus 10 must all be multiplied by 2. Uh, subtract 2. Now, this is going to get kind of messy. Um, so we have, in fact, the thing we want to do, let's go back to distribution to actually make that happen. So let's go 2n. 2 times n is 2n. 2 times 10 is 20. So now when I subtract 2, we've got to be careful since n, this term contains an n. I can't subtract 2 from that, but I can subtract 2 from the 20. So I have 2n minus 18. And then divide by 2, so 2n minus 18, all divided by 2. Okay. Now, if you wanted to be a little clever here, we could d dive one step deeper. And since I am in control of the video, I shall do so. And think of this as dividing each individual thing by 2. So 2n divided by 2 is just an n. And then if I take negative 18 divided by 2, I should get a minus 9. So that actually kind of indicates that whatever number I pick, if I subtract 9 from it, I get, uh, I'll get my final answer. And you can actually see that makes sense. If I... Okay. Okay, so uh, we need to write the next two terms of the following sequence. So first we have to kind of figure out the pattern, right? So let's, let's see. I see a plus 1, then here's a plus 2, here's a plus 3. I think the pattern is kind of developing. This will be a plus 4. That makes this one plus 5 is to get this guy, plus 6 to get to the next one, and then plus 7 to get to my last term. Um, so if I'm filling this in, 14 plus 5 is equal to 19, plus 6 is equal to 25, and then plus 7 is equal to 32. Okay. Now, to explain the reasoning. I think we kind of talked about that, so we'll just move on. All right, let's use the following input-output table. Now, input-output table, that's not a big deal. We have to think about it in terms of input-output, is that input is what I put in, and output is the result, okay, in and out. So if I input 3, I need to multiply by a negative 2 and then add 4. So negative 2 times my input of 3 and then add 4. A negative 2 times 3 would be a negative 6 plus 4. My output's a negative 2. Okay, now there's nothing, no mystery here, we're just going to keep on going. So negative 2 minus 2 plus 4. Negative 2 uh, times a negative 2 would be a positive 4. Plus 4 is equal to 8. Negative 2 times 1.5 plus 4. So it would be a negative 3. Plus 4 would be a positive 1. Negative 1 times... So it's negative 2 times a negative 1 plus 4. Uh, negative 2 times negative 1 is a positive 2 plus 4 is equal to 6. And then we have negative 2 times 5 for input plus 4. That right there gives a negative 10 plus 4 via negative 6. So let's find a value that makes each of these statements true. So I start and end with the same number, so it has to be a 1. Start and end with the same number has to be 1. Uh, start with a 2, end with a 1, I have to cut that guy in half. Negative 2, end up with 1. And also I change the sign, so it's going to be a negative half. Okay, so let's complete the following statements. Uh, when you multiply a number by, by 1, well, what happens when I take a 3 times 1? Let's get a 3. If I take a 4 times 1, get a 4. So my claim is nothing happens. Okay, when we multiply a number by its reciprocal, now we have to understand reciprocal means if I take a 2, its reciprocal is 1 half. If I take a 3, its reciprocal is one third. If I take a two thirds, its reciprocal is three halves. So in the result of all of these, I take two times a half, I get one. Three times a third, I get one. Uh, two thirds times three halves, I get one. So multiply by reciprocal, you get one. All right. So that's what I have for you guys today. Hope you guys. I hope that helps. I will see you guys later.